the frogs. We gotta have the frogs. Welcome everybody to Web Sleuth YouTube Live. My name is Trisha Griffith, and we have uh, Phineas Chad. That's the uh, the leader of the frogs in Insightful Ones Pond. He is the one impregnating all of those other frogs. He's trying to get to one hundred and forty-four thousand, <laughs> and uh, he's using his portal to bring in more women. So yes, he is the, the child of. Yeah, there you go. Uh, yeah. Listen to that. That's crazy. That uh, is crazy, crazy. Hey, I want to thank Terry Queer. Terry, thank you so much for your donation. I saw that you made it on um, the YouTube chat, which is great. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much, my dear. We have a lot to get to tonight. But first and foremost, I need to take a drink here. So hang on. Hang on, hang on. Uh, there we go. And thank you all for your wonderful comments and kind comments about my hair. Um, I, I, I'm thrilled here. I'm just, I'm thrilled. I just don't ever want to have old lady hair. Okay. I want to be 90 and have cool chick hair and have everybody go, what is that 90 year old woman doing with cool chick? She looks ridiculous. <laughs> That's what I want. Hi, Deborah Martina Lewis. Good to see you. And let's see, Lindy Bridges is here. Moonlight View and Red Like Wine again. The Thoris, good to see you, my darling. Marilyn Landis, Terry Queer, Mar uh, Marlene Clausen, Lindy Bridges, and Kibby. Hi, Kibby. Da -da, Kathy Lynch, hello, Mary L. Hi there. Mm -mm -mm. Red like wine again. Want to make sure I get everybody. Susie Baker. And uh, da -da -da -da. Dee -dee -dee -dee. Marilyn Landis. Just making sure everybody gets here. Oh, what did I just do? Hold on. What did I do? There we are. And uh, if I've missed anybody, hold on. Let me get to the top here. Susie Baker, Kibby, Red like wine again. Kathy Lynch, Susie Baker. And what happens is we don't get to see the whole chat all night long it cuts itself off. So if you're on there and I don't say hi to you, it's because I didn't see your name. So forgive me. Uh, I had a, a message from Lillian Gale's wife, uh, Nancy. And uh, she said, Lillian is hanging in there. She's just going through a few things, still has some pain, trouble sleeping. She She's okay. She's doing good. She's hanging strong and she will be back soon. So let's just... Uh, Give lots of love and, and positive energy to our wonderful Lily and Gail. Okay? Okay. Now, I don't mean to be gross, but for some reason, my my new teeth, it, I'm having a, a, a saliva issue. So forgive me if I sound like um, Sylvester the cat and just blah, blah, blah all night long. I do apologize. But hey, I can smile. Okay. <sighs> Where should I start first? How about what happened in court today, which I didn't know there was a court hearing for Lori Vallow. Thank the Lord for Nate Eaton. I swear, I just want to go up to him and just start going like this, you know, just like uh, in Wayne's world. <laughs> We're not worthy because he is so good at covering this case. And from what he says, East Idaho News will be providing the audio every day at the end of the trial. They're just going to upload it, the whole thing. So we can listen to it. Yay. That was my big concern, trying to figure out who was going to do that and just leave it up, not chop it up and give us little bits and pieces. So thank goodness. In fact, uh, I'm going to put up a link to East Idaho News. There is a link to audio tonight from the hearing today. And let me tell you what that hearing was about today. I don't believe anything was decided as far as what happened, because here's the scoop. Um, now, a judge will issue a decision next week on three motions in the Lori Vallow Daybell case. And that's what they talked about today. OK, the trial is going to start in less than three weeks. Judge Stephen Boyce, boo, boo, Stephen Boyce, you jerk for not allowing cameras in the courtroom. I will never forgive you. And you've lost all my respect. And that should keep you up at nights, man. Anyway, he heard oral arguments today on motions filed by Jim Archibald and John Thomas, Daybell's attorneys. She and her husband, Chad, are charged with the murders, 
but you know, you know all that. There's a motion to compel. Dable's attorneys asked for the prosecution to turn over all written and recorded statements made by Chad while in custody. Thomas acknowledged that on Monday he received approximately 3,000 phone calls and recordings of five in-custody visits involving Chad. Thomas did not specify who Chad was speaking or visiting with when the calls and visits were made. Obviously, we're very close to the commencement of the trial in this, so we have limited time to get through these. When asked by Boyce if prosecutors are confident all the previously recorded conversations have been turned over to Daybell's defense team, Fremont County Prosecuting Attorney Lindsey Blake said yes. Part of the issue is there is an ongoing matter, Blake said, referring to the fact that Chad remains in Fremont County Jail and continues to make phone calls. In other words, he can't shut up and they have to turn all of those phone calls over to the defense and a bit, it's a big pain in the portal for everybody. <laughs> Let's see. Um, and Daybell's attorney also asked Boyce to exclude evidence that prosecutors disclosed, disclosed to them on February 27th. And uh, on and on and on, blah, 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 blah. I'll put all of this in the, the link so you can read all of the uh, back and forth here. Um, to dump 5,000 pages, 5,000 pages, see, I'm sorry. <laughs> to dump 5,000 pages on us on February 27th, hours of video and audio recordings and another 3,000 phone calls two days ago. It's just really disappointing that we had to wait this long to get all the discovery, Archibald said. And I understand that. That's a hell of a lot to go through. Right. Now, Madison County Prosecuting Attorney Rob Wood responded that the amount of evidence in the case is voluminous and prosecutors have never intentionally not turned over to the defense. He said many of the reports contained in the recent filing were given to the Daybell's attorneys in August of 2021. Now, they were given to Mark Means. Remember Mark Means? Yeah. Yeah. Not somebody, in my opinion, I personally hire, but that's just me. Anyway, um, there's a motion to dismiss the death penalty. All right. So then it goes on and on about that. Now, what's next? Boyce said he would take the motions under advisement and issue decisions during a hearing on Wednesday, March 22nd. That's the day I am traveling to Salt Lake City. I am hoping Ping will be able to do my show tonight. So hopefully or that night on March 22nd. So hopefully we'll have some updates here. Now, Lori is scheduled to be transported to the Ada County Jail no later than March 25th. And jury selection begins on April 3rd. Can you believe it? It is that close. Oh my gosh. So here, let me put this, let me put this in the chat room here. Now, also on this page, you can find the audio of the uh, of the uh, the hearing today. It was over an hour long. Was that right? I believe. Yeah. Uh, insightful on yeah and it was just you know if i ever wanted to go into a coma i would listen to these attorneys go on and on like this your honor this is what we let's put everybody in a coma i listen to about five minutes and i'm like I i'll never wake up so uh hopefully they'll be a little more energetic uh later on Okay, East Idaho News. Let me put this up here. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Not to change the subject, but I was wondering about this earlier. The Thoris is posting in chat about the medium's results on the painting. Oh, does she have it? And so we need to like get her on one Saturday or something or whenever. Uh, the Thoris, why don't you come on Saturday? Why don't you come on Woo Woo and yeah. tell us about it, okay? Can you do that? Like like I expect her to speak up and go, oh, yes, Trisha, like I could hear her. <laughs> so, um, the Thoris, we'll be in touch, okay, my dear? But if you could come on, that would be fantastic. Now, let me remind everybody, the Thoris purchased a painting from a, a haunted store, basically. And they found a human tooth in the painting. And since they had this painting, all these weird things have been happening. They returned it. The Thoris returned it, said, I don't want my money back. I don't want anything. I just want this picture out of my house. Well, if I'm not mistaken, even the, the guy that sold them to him didn't really want it back. But they took it to a medium, and I'm hoping they have the results, and that's what we're talking about. So, Yeah, and she says she'll come on the show. 
Oh, fantastic. Okay, great. Fabulous. So that's good. Good. And in a little while, we'll talk about an extra show that we're doing Saturday afternoon. So let's not forget about to talk about that as well. Okay. So anyway, hats off to Nate Eaton um, for making it so we don't all lose our minds and making it basically so we can have an idea of what's going on in the Lori Daybell case. Again, Judge Boyce, you bad on you. Shame on you. You, you are disgusting for doing that to the family. How dare you? What a, what a power-hungry, awful person you are to do that to the Daybell and to the, uh, the Vallow family, especially to the Vallows, to JJ's grandparents. My God. And, and you know, well, of course, that's going to be in uh, Arizona when Charles Vallow's murder trial happens with Lori. But yeah, that's just that's just horrible. It's just disgusting. He's he's a horrible. I'm sorry. He's a terrible judge. I used to really like him, and now I can't. Judge Boyce is just on the on my low list. He really is. It makes me sick. JDR says, "What if it's a tooth from a missing person?" Yeah, that would be pretty freaky. I Very saw that. Yikes! Yikes! <laughs> okay, now. Um, Y'all remember Stephen Smith? He went to school with Buster. Is it Buster? Yeah. I always think Butch. Buster. <laughs> yeah, but God. Maddox. Maddox. Madaboo-boo. I don't know how they pronounce it. Murdoch. Murdoch. Thank you. <laughs> Madaboo-boo. I don't know. You, I just, you, I am, you, you guys, I apologize. I'm just so flustered with everything I'm trying to remember and trying to get organized. And I keep watching these, these hypnosis ta tapes to try and get me more organized. And all it does is scramble my brain more because it makes me think about organization that I can't do. So it's like, I'm going to stop doing that. But anyway, Stephen Smith's family deserves answers and they're trying to raise money so they can have his body exhumed for an autopsy now i'm going to read an article here from people magazine about this and what is just appalling is you have murder victims by alex you have paul or papa the made-up word that alex used on the stand to describe paul murdoch who took uh, the keys to the boat and drove wildly drunk and killed, um, is it Mallory Beach? A horrible, horrible thing to do. To me, that's murder, absolute murder. Now, there have been, and I'm not suggesting this because I have no idea, but we do know that Stephen and um, Buster did go to the same school, very small town. So I'm going to read this article here from People Magazine. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe, maybe. Where did my... Hold on. Oh, my God. I had it up here. I swear I did. Just a second. Let me find it. Mm -hmm. da, 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 da. I trusted him, Alex Murdoch. Or do we post um, crime stories? Nancy Grace, Margaret Baby. Did I send it to you, the People Magazine article? I, just, I sent it to you. The, uh, it you didn't send the People seconds, Magazine. Oh, I sent. You didn't send the People Magazine article about Stephen Smith. Let me you look at the email. No, you sent you sent the uh, the GoFundMe. Oh, thank you. Yes. So hold on, let me uh, let me grab this here. I think I may have sent it to you. Just a second. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, okay. Sorry, guys. I had it here. Let me grab it. Don't know what happened to it. Hang on. Could you read a few comments while we do this? Yes. Okay. Um, people are mentioning the made to. Oh, of course, the May. Yeah, yeah. the May. Kenny and they, that, that okay. should be reinvestigated, in my opinion, as well. Yeah. There was something we talked about them exhuming the body or 
There's been talk about exhuming the maid's body. I know that. Oh, I found I, I this. Like, okay. Here it is. This okay. is from People Magazine about eight days ago. Stephen Smith's death has been considered mysterious since he was found dead. Now, keep in mind, I want you to picture this. Found dead in the middle of rural South Carolina road in 2015. And questions have intensified since 2021, since the murders of Maggie and Paul Murdoch. We all know about that because we talked about it 800 billion times. Now, Smith, a 19-year-old nursing student from Hampton, South Carolina, was found dead in the early morning hours of July 8, 2015. He was discovered lying in the middle of a dark country road three miles away from where his car had run out of gas. Three miles away. And his car was in a ditch, too. He had deep gashes on his forehead, and several local news outlets reported that several uh, that several local news outlets reported. Authorities initially thought Smith had been shot, but his, his death was later ruled a hit and run, a claim that his mother, Sandy Smith, disputes to this day. Sandy and I both believe this was a murder, Smith family attorney Mike uh, Hemlip told people. Whoever did this to Stephen should go to prison. Now, Smith's case was initially investigated by South Carolina Highway Patrol before going cold in 2016. In that investigation, the Murdoch name, a powerful local family known for their longstanding law firm, was mentioned dozens of times as possibly being connected to Smith's death. However, no member of the Murdoch family has ever been questioned. But in June 2021, nearly six years after Smith was found dead, South Carolina's top law enforcement agency announced that they were opening an investigation into his death. Now, they said, uh, SLED said in a statement that the investigation was launched based upon information gathered during the course of the double murder investigation of Paul and Maggie Murdoch. Uh, we've been waiting on this forever, Sandy Smith said at the time. Stephen's always been put on the back burner. It's like nobody's looking for answers. Now, also, hold on one second here. Now, according to the Hampton County Guardian, Smith was on his way home from a night class at a technical college where he was studying nursing when his car ran out of gas on Highway 601. Authorities believe he began walking home alone on Sandy Run Road. And that's a claim his family disputes. Stephen would never have been walking in the middle of the roadway, the family told investigators, saying he was skittish. And um, hold on, let's see. Bye -bye. How is it? Now it was ruled a hit and run. Okay. But here's something that was reported. And I've been trying to find it ever since I read it. But supposedly somebody from the Murdoch family showed up at the crime scene that night, supposedly. Again, I have not confirmed that. It was, uh, I was reading it, you know, how, how kind of flighty I am, and I, I lost where I was reading it. So anyway, uh, this uh, Fitz News has done some great work on this. So apparently, um, Smith was found with his loosely tied shoes still on his feet, and his, and his clothes appeared untouched. Now, does that sound like a hit and run? You would think he would have he broken bones, and his clothes would be a mess, and there'd be blood. Something's weird. Right. In August 2015, Coroner Ernie Washington, who was present at the scene when Smith's body was found, told lead investigators Todd Proctor that he did not agree with the autopsy findings. Proctor's case notes from the conversation detailed that Washington said he does not agree with the pathologist that the victim was struck by a motor vehicle. Proctor, who no longer works for SLED, later echoed similar doubts about the hit and run. Nothing about this case from the very beginning pointed towards it being a hit and run. He continued, as any investigators, as any investigator, you go off the evidence. There was no evidence that pointed towards this being a hit and run or a vehicle even being involved. It looks like it was staged. Now, the Murdoch name was mentioned more than 40 times in the investigation. Why? Although no Murdoch family member was ever 
ever question. The Murdoch family was first mentioned in relation to Smith's death on July 17, 2015, in their detailed timeline of the days following the discovery of his body. A member of the Smith family told SLED that Randy Murdoch, Alex's, Alex Murdoch's brother, had contacted Smith's father the day of his death and said he would take on Smith's case free of charge. In the same interview, the Smith family told SLED that the first time she went to the store following Smith's death, people approached her and alleged that Buster Murdoch, Alex's oldest son and classmate of Smith, was responsible. Let's bet uh, that there were you know, there was no notes. His name wasn't mentioned in any notes or anything. From that point on, the Murdoch family name was brought up more than 40 times throughout the course of the investigation. Additionally, more than half of the people interviewed during the investigation mentioned hearing about rumors about Buster Murdoch's possible involvement in Smith's death. But Buster was never brought in for questioning. I, I don't get this. I just don't get it. Unfortunately, a lot of this is just hearsay, you know. Um, right. Another individual told police that certain young men were riding down Highway 601 the night Smith died and saw him broken down and turned around. The young men then struck something, stuck something out the window, the in individual stated, that ended up hitting Smith and killing him. The individual also told police in a face-to-face -face meeting that one of the men in the car was reportedly Buster Murdoch. But all of that information is only hearsay. So I just don't get why nobody was brought in. Now, Sandy Smith, his mother, asked the FBI for help in her son's case and accused authorities of a cover-up. And she says, my family is desperate in desperate need of your help, Sandy reportedly wrote in her letter. My 19-year-old son, Stephen, my 19-year-old son, Stephen Smith, was murdered on July 8, 2015 in Hampton County. It had been apparent from the first week of this investigation that the authorities are covering up critical evidence and we no longer know who to trust. Sandy went on to describe several issues she had with the investigation into her son's death, including changing theories on how he died, discrepancies in the 911 log, and authorities' failure to gain access to Smith's phone. She also disputed the autopsy claim that her son was hit by a car. I, I, I think we can throw that hitting by the car theory right out the window. So anyway, the investigation into Smith's death was reopened in 2021. And a lawyer for the Smith family said, I know there are people who know what happened to Stephen. The old way of doing business in Hampton does not exist anymore. There's a bright light being shined on the county and anyone who knows anything needs to come forward. In other words, the Murdoch family doesn't control everything anymore. They just don't. Now, Smith death, Smith's death isn't the only case that investigators have looked into since the Murdoch murders. Uh, in June 2022, investigators announced they would be they would exhume the body, there we go, of Gloria Satterfield, the Murdoch family housekeeper, who died from a supposed slip and fall at their family home. And then, of course, we have the boating accident and all of that. So anyway, um, I'm going to put this link up. It's a long, long article. And I'll put it up here in chat. And then I'm going to put up a link because they're have a GoFundMe to try and raise money to exhume Stephen's uh, body. Let yep, exhume it and perform an autopsy. Yes, exactly. Okay, I'll put this up now and then I'm going to read the GoFundMe here. Hold on one second here. He's a beautiful kid. Isn't he? He's gorgeous. Yeah. yeah. Um, the family of Stephen N. Smith is incredibly grateful for the outpouring of love and support we've received from Standing for Stephen and for the community as a whole. You may have been monumental in shining, in shining light on Stephen's story and the lack of justice. 
We feel it's critical to seek a new goal, an independent exhumation and autopsy, and we're launching Justice for Stephen and Smith with the immediately goal in, with an immediate goal in mind. While the state can elect and fund an exhumation and now and a new autopsy, it is our understanding that it would be carried out at MUSC, where his death was initially classified as hit and run, despite no evidence to support it. We need new, we need a new unbiased look at his body and an accurate determination of his cause of death based on facts. There was no debris in the road and his injuries were not consistent with a hit and run. We have learned that an independent autopsy will be approximately $7,000. In addition, a private medical examiner must be present from the start of the exhumation through the examiner period at a cost of approximately $7.50 per hour. It is a huge expense, but we are hoping that with your support, we can make this happen and finally get the answers we need. If you can give, we thank you for your generosity. If you cannot, we appreciate you sharing and praying for justice for Stephen. We believe 2023 is Stephen's year. Thank you again for the love and support. And so far they have raised, oh, they've done good, but they probably need more. They've raised um, 23, over $23,000. If anybody can find the article or where, somewhere where it said that um, the, the Murdoch brothers, Alex and one of his brothers, showed up that night that uh, Stephen died, if you can find it and, and send it to me, that would be great. I'm trying to find it, and I hope I'm not confusing statements here and confusing Was cases. Was that the documentary? What? Was that in the documentary, wasn't it? I, I don't remember seeing it in the documentary, but that doesn't mean it didn't happen. Yeah. So if anybody can remember, let me know. That would be great. Uh, let's see. Oh, let's see. Hold on here. Susie Baker says, in the HBO, I, I think, documentary, Paul's girlfriend said she mentioned at a, a dinner at Murdoch's, why did Buster's name come up about Stephen? They all laughed with a homophobic slur. Oh, that's lovely. Uh, Moonlight View, I don't know what that means. Did Buster turn into Timmy? I, I am sorry, I don't know what that means. Ashley Higgins says, Alec and Randy were at the crime scene. Ashley, that's what I've heard. But as we know, uh, rumors and just thoughts thrown out there can turn into fact when in fact they're not facts. So if we can back that up somewhere in an official report or a statement from somebody involved in the case, that would be great. Okay, yes. Now, we do know that uh, Randy called Stephen's dad wanting to represent the case pro bono. That we know that's been stated, but I don't think he I, I don't think that's where it came up. He was at the crime scene that night. Now, it is not an illogical step to think that um, that if a Murdoch family member had something to do with this, that they would want to step in and take the case pro bono so they could control the narrative. That would not be surprising at all. Okay, hold on here. Ashley Higgins says, it was on the documentary and the CNN interview with Stephen's mom. She said they were at the crime scene. Okay, thank you, Ashley Higgins. That's what I needed. You know, if things like that, I, I like to have backup. Um, I need to watch the HBO documentary. I have not, uh, I've just watched the uh, Netflix documentary. So I do need to watch that. And yes, Buster has a long shadow, very long shadow. Oh. Thank you, Mill Max. See, I, I had no idea. Um, when Buster drinks too much, his alter ego is Timmy per Netflix. I, I don't remember that. So thank you, Mill Max. That's what Moonlight View was talking about. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, Paul's friends talked about Timmy when he gets drunk. Well, and that very well could be. And it has been suggested that um, Stephen was gay and perhaps there was something there. And we have certainly seen that. I've seen that happen myself to one of my dearest friends who was um, shot 
because, thank you, who sent this to me, Robin? Uh, because he had a quick one night stand with a guy and the guy didn't want anybody to know he was gay. So he hunted down my friend and shot him between the eyes. And so that is always a possibility. Always, always, always. Um, let's see here. Hold on. I'm just reading something really quickly here that somebody sent me. Trying to see, does it say in here? So, yeah, Lindy Bridges, it, it, Bridges, it was horrible. Oh, and by the way, my friend's murderer got six years. You know why? The judge said, my friend had something to do with it. He was partly responsible. Yeah, the judge was voted out of office. Out of That's Utah, people. That's how bad it was. And the guy got six years for literally hunting down my friend and shooting him between the eyes uh, because he had an an affair with him that night in the bedroom and his cowboy buddies were making fun of him. So he had to prove himself macho. He hunted down my friend, killed him. Judge said that my friend was partly responsible because he provided him alcohol and drugs. Jeez. Oh, so bad. And the guy got six years. He left. Uh, he, you know, got out of prison, changed his name and nobody knows where he's at. So no, you haven't opened up a can of worms. No, 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 no. You have not opened up a can of worms, my dear. Not at all. Not at all. Yeah, I just didn't, I didn't hear, I don't remember hearing about uh, Buster becoming Timmy after drinking. But yeah, I, I believe you if it was, you said it was it a Paul yeah. had an alter ego when he drank. Yeah. Oh, it was Paul. Oh, I thought you said. I'm sorry. I thought you said it was Buster. So okay, now but, I'm all confused. But I think she was making a reference to Paul. Okay. Or yeah. Buster being like Paul, maybe. Maybe. Yeah, that could be. Sorry, I see what you're saying. Now, now I'm all confused. So. Ah. <sighs> it's in the Netflix documentary. <laughs> no, I, no, I believe it. So okay, so it was Paul that had the. Uh, Timmy alter ego when he drank not Buster yeah. okay uh, Kibby uh, what can I what do you what do you want me to clarify you tell me and I will do my best to clarify thank you Tracy yes Paul became Timmy not Buster oh Kathy okay Kathy Lynch said uh, just it's an article about Murdoch showing up at the hit and run. Okay, and you sent it where? To my email, to my, hold on here. Mm -mm. Oh, here it is, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, let's see here. I thought I read it somewhere. Let me just, I would just wanna get this here so we can uh, be sure that that was in the mainstream media and I just didn't make it up here. Mm-mm, mm-hmm, the desk, yeah. Long rumored involvement, Smith's death, his family in the middle of the road, his clothes were intact, clear uh, that looked like it was done by something other than a car. Okay, here we go. This is from uh, Yahoo News. Murdoch supposedly showed up on the accident scene, according to Smith's mother, Sandy. She received a telephone call from him where he offered to represent her. Okay, so he did call her, according to Stephen's mother. He did call yeah. from the actual scene and said, I will represent you. Why would he be there? Why would a member of the Murdoch family be on scene at Stephen Smith's hit and run, which we know it really wasn't? Why? There's no, they didn't have a connection. It wasn't like a big family friend. Did somebody make a phone call and say, hey, Buster was seen in a car with these kids and maybe something happened would that surprise anybody thank you kathy lynch thank you very much for that glad i found it so there we go yeah this one's so quiet i've been sitting here reading different articles 
<laughs> I know there's a lot out there. Hi, to find um, that, but I remember it being in the documentary, so I was trying to find an article. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Tyra Yella. Good to see you, my dear. Well, Mel Mac, yeah, I could see ambulance chasers. That's a good point because, um, you know, they do. There are lawyers that try and find accidents and then hand out their card and say, let me represent you. And maybe the police, a, a cop had a deal and said, hey, if there's ever a, a big case, I'll call you. But I kind of doubt it. So let's let's run through this, my darling, shall we? Okay. Mm -hmm. We have, first, the Murdoch family maid who supposedly tripped and fell and died. Alex said, let me represent you. Basically, he had an insurance policy that was an umbrella policy, very big, for $4 million. And he told uh, the maid son, sons, Gloria Sutterfield, that he would represent them and basically, basically get his insurance policy to pay, which he did. Now, supposedly, if I remember correctly, come on. Gloria slipped and fell because of the dogs. Therefore, the uh, Murdoch estate was responsible. And that's what Alex was going on, right? Well, come to find out he stole that money and just kept the sons Gloria's sons at bay saying they were still working on the case. They eventually did get their money and I believe even more than what they were expecting, which they should. Okay, that's the first murder. Second one, Stephen Smith. It's like, what? Huh? Well, Stephen was before Gloria. Oh, he was? I thought Gloria was, uh, okay, well. Wait, wasn't she 2018? Stephen was 2015. Oh, I thought Gloria was before that. Okay, so, uh, Gloria was second. Stephen was first. Okay. Yeah. Stephen was first. Now, again, Stephen Smith, very tragic, lost his, uh, and not lost, ran out of gas, supposedly, and was hit by a car, hit and run. Oh, what did that have to do with the Murdoch family? Nothing. But some, for some reason, uh, one of Alex's brothers was on the scene according to Stephen's mother, and called her and said, let me represent you for nothing. Why would he do that? Does the Murdoch family remind you of people that want to help those that have less than they do? Hell no. They kick them out of their way. They look at them and just spit on them. Well, but that was the whole of the situation. Exactly. But all of that was covered up. Nothing else was said. And poor Stephen's family was forgotten. Okay. Then we had Gloria, the maid. Then we had Paul, who um, got the keys to the boat. And I, if I remember, did Alex give Paul the keys to the boat? I believe he did. I'm and uh, Buster, sure Buster gave Paul his fake his ID so he could buy booze. Uh, he was so drunk and the kids, and if you watch the Netflix documentary, it's just appalling. And the kids on the boat were begging him, stop, let us off, let's not do this. He eventually crashed the boat and killed Mallory Beach. So now Paul has a death under his belt. And then we know what happened to Paul and, uh, and his mom. And his mom, Maggie. So... Paul has a death under his belt. What involvement, if any, did Buster have with Stephen Smith? Another weird death. Alex Murdoch has a maid that trips over the dog and dies. Now they are exhuming her body. And then Alex Murdoch was convicted of the just shocking murder of his son and wife. You know, how many people need to die to keep the Murdoch family free and clear and living their happy life. It is absolutely appallingly disgusting. And if Buster had anything to do with this, he needs to be in prison with his father. It, from what has been said and from what we have read, it is obvious it was not a hit and run. After that, I don't know, but again, 
I don't know why any member of the Murdoch family would be on the scene at Stephen Smith's death. Why? Why, why, why? Oops, 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 hold on. Uh, retired RN says, I think the elder Murdoch's were more involved in the cover-ups. Do you mean the dad, like the grandpa? Because they, they have said that Alex always went to his dad who bailed him out of everything. Absolutely. So hold on one second here. Dee, 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 dee. Exactly, Kathy Lynch. How many people died in connection to this family? It is horrible. Absolutely horrible. A good question, Barbara. Was Alex's father or grandfather involved in any murders? There's nothing at all to suggest they were. But this family is deadly, disgusting, entitled, repulsive group of people. Um, and I'm just going by what has come out in court documents and what has come out publicly. The way Paul behaved, uh, just like an entitled brat, buster, thrown out of law school for plagiarism. makes me sick absolutely but just they all make me sick completely i just somebody said something here i couldn't see it so there's a lot of good comments there it is um teresa gosnell said so he could know all the evidence and drive evidence away from buster he offered to take the case pro bono well that could be it now again we have nothing to concretely say that Buster was involved. We just have to ask, why was the Murdoch family involved? And where was Buster that night? Was he out driving around with his friends? Could have been. I mean, hell, you remember when you were young like that, get in the car, drive around, act like idiots. I still do that. I did that just tonight. For fun. But, you know, again... We don't have anything on Buster, but it is appalling how the Murdoch family behaved in this community. Absolutely appalling. And Carol Z, that it's not Alex that people thought that might have had an affair with Stephen. It's somebody else. And I'll let you make that assumption. And again, that certainly isn't the first time that a person has been killed because they had a one night stand and they didn't want anybody to find out that they were gay. Like I said, it happened to me and my friend personally. It happens and it's horrible. So anyway. Or people okay. simply getting killed because they were gay. It flat out just getting killed because yeah. they were gay. Yeah, don't doesn't need, you don't need to have an affair. They just want to kill gay people. Yeah. They still do. It's horrible. So Anyway, um, mm, 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 mm. Mm, mm. there you go, Lindy Bridges. Lindy Bridges wins the trophy tonight. If we had a trophy, I'd give it to her. Now, where did her comment go? Here it is. Dun, da, da, da. We don't know what they did in the past because the Murdochs were still powerful enough to cover it. Hmm. Now, I've not heard this uh, at all. This is the first time I've heard this. This is Tyra Ya, and I apologize if I mispronounce it. I'm terrible at pronouncing names. I'm she really said old. you were the first person to say her name right in oh, comments. Then I, then I get the trophy. I'm taking it back, Lindsay. <laughs> I get the trophy. There was a rumor that Stephen's case had a rape kit, test kit in evidence and that evidence was lost. That would be really bad and and very unusual to take a rape test on a hit and run but then again we don't know what really went on so i that say that was my question is if they did a kit and then i thought to myself well if it was hit and run they wouldn't do that 
But again, Correct. did they know Correct. it wasn't a hit and run and right. others just called it like that? Remember, the Murdochs had great power. And oh, exactly. Still, and there's still people afraid of them. So, you know. From everything I read, it um, professionals disagreed it was a hit and run. Um, you know, yeah. some people didn't agree with that. There were things didn't make sense and everything, so. Exactly. And I think just reading the little bit that we have read tonight, it's if what is being reported is correct, it's pretty obvious it wasn't a hit and run. If you've ever seen a hit and run body, it's gruesome. It's horrible. The clothes are ripped. The shoes are flying. There's blood, broken bones, nothing like that. There was a gash. Didn't look like, apparently, according to the witnesses, that it was made by a car. And his shoes were still on him, lightly tied. Yeah. The whole thing. Okay. Um, Mel Mac says they didn't do the rape test offered by the FBI. It was rebuked. Okay. I, there's going to be all kinds of, of bits and pieces like this uh, when, when this starts to get rolling here. And I think it will get rolling pretty quickly. So. Oh, wait a minute, Kibby. I didn't know this. Do you guys know this? Maybe this was in the documentary and I just didn't know it. Hey, no, you can't. This was given to me by Penguin. Remember, you know Penguin, not remember Penguin. You know Penguin yeah. in the chat. Penguin, isn't this nice? And Bug Nugget thinks it's his own big, huge, personal chew toy. No, no, no. I know. Don't look at me like that. You don't get it. No, no, no. So... Uh, Kibby says the first Murdoch committed suicide by stepping in front of a train. The family sued, and that started a cycle of suing the train company. That's yep. how they got their money. Interesting. Very interesting. Yeah, Alex talked about that. Yeah. The train. Very, very interesting. So we're just going to watch and, and wait and see and hope that uh, they get the exhumation. They have the money for it. They can do it. And then see what they, okay, I've got it. I'm sorry. I've got to put the penguin away and, and see what the, the results are. Unfortunately, um, I, for, well, fortunately, I'm just very grateful that they did not, um, uh, that they buried sweet Stephen and uh, didn't, uh, oh, see my brain. Oh my God, my brain. What's it called when you put them in an urn? Um, come on. Oh my God. What is it called? You put them in an urn, they're... Uh, cremated. Thank you, cremated. Oh. Cremated. Um, Sarah, if I remember correctly, the son testified... He testified that they got the money. Am I losing my mind? He testified that they got the money because the um, the law firm came up with it after they found out what Alex had done. So, I mean, he, that's what he that's what he testified to in court. Yeah, after the fact. Yeah, after the, exactly after the fact. They didn't get the money at first at all. They got no money, but then after the fact, when it was discovered what Alex has done, the law firm chipped in and gave the boys the money they deserved. So thank you, cremated. That's what I was trying to think of. Thank you, thank you. And Mary L says, it sounds like Stephen was ran off the road and then his body was put three miles away and staged on the road to look like something else. That's kind of what it sounds like to me. So. Or he I'm, could have just been dumped out of a car. And that too. After absolutely. whatever happened. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So anyway, exactly. And Carol Z, I'm so sorry, Carol Z. She says, my aunt was hit uh, by a car and lost her shoes in a crosswalk. And that's usually what happens when you're hit. Your, your shoes go flying off. So very, very sorry, my dear. Anyway, there is there's so much about this family that needs to be looked into. But let's just hope and pray that they do. In fact, I'm going to share this page right here so you all can see. 
that Stephen's family is given the justice that they deserve just to find out what happened. And again, why in the world were any of the Murdochs there that night? Why? It do, that just doesn't make any sense. He didn't have any great connection to the family. None. Somebody called him. Somebody called them. And for some reason, they showed up. And that's how it worked in that town with the Murdoch family. They were so powerful. Or so, hypothetically, or hypothetically, if there was a family member involved in the Stephen thing, they could have went home and told him. Oh, oh, exactly. That that absolutely. If there was, if if Buster was involved, he could have called and said, "I think I might be in trouble." And boom, they're right there. And they that's go do not, damage control. That's that's what I'm saying, mm -hmm. without saying it. But I'll say it now, without saying it. <laughs> Obviously, if a Murdoch family member showed up, he was there to do damage control because somebody told him that another member of the family was involved somehow, some way. That's what it appears to be. So, uh, no, Alex's mother passed away as, and his father did too. Is that correct? I know his dad did. I believe his mother did too. So, let's see here. Oh, yes, Glam Dolly 30. Steven was a real good looking guy. Really good looking. Yes, Teresa, you're right. If any Murdoch was involved in something, that could have consequences the family wanted to be involved to control the narrative absolutely yeah. absolutely oh his mother is still alive i thought she was very ill and passed away do we know i don't know if anybody knows let me know Glam Dolly 30, you absolutely could be right. In fact, um, you know, honestly, that was my first thought uh, when I heard about Stephen's sexuality. And again, I'm making giant assumptions here. So forgive me if I am wrong. These are just assumptions on my part. Small town, powerful family, probably very conservative. To them, being gay was not something that they would accept. I am hoping that we have gotten oh i had hoped we'd gotten over that type of crap but no i don't think so so that very well could be it very well could be so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. well yeah ambry exactly that's what paul did when he was in the crash he he called his grandparents you know they all, and the whole family got involved. That's when Alex went to the the uh, hospital and he wore his badge outside on his pants so everybody could see it, you know, telling the kids not to talk. Of course. And the, one of the most heartbreaking things in the Netflix documentary is when um, Mallory Beach's boyfriend is screaming at Paul saying, why are you laughing? Why are you smiling? You killed my girlfriend. Oh, yeah. it's just disgusting. Just disgusting. What are you doing, dog? What are you doing? There's nothing there. So just absolutely just a suspicion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Kathy Lynch, a lot of people uh, felt that way. And unfortunately, I'm still shocked that in this day and age, there are still people that feel like they have to hide. And I get why they do. Boy, do I ever. Do I ever. So, anyway. I'm terribly sad. And so many people hide just because of their family. I know. Because they're afraid of their family's reaction and that they'll lose them. And unfortunately, sometimes that's true. So, oh, it's I have, horrible. Yeah. I had a friend who died of AIDS whose father kicked him out at 15, 15, found out he was gay, kicked him out. What is he supposed to do at 15? Oh. You know, and what a horrible father. What a rotten human being. 
And then when he passed away of AIDS, he shows up and he's all crying. And I just wanted to smack him and say, how dare you? You know, you gave this kid no chance in life. He he had to do what he had to do to survive. Oh, it makes me so mad. You know, my uncle, he's in his 70s now. He's gay. And Mm -hmm. that's my mom's youngest brother. And we just grew up with our Terry. He was our gay uncle and his mother, father, nobody had a problem or anything. It was well, nothing. you're very, very lucky, and that's very rare uh, yeah. back in the 70s and 80s. Started to change a little bit in the 90s, but that's, you know, very wonderful, loving family. But again, this is a small, conservative town and a very powerful family. Yeah. And that could, again, nothing to suggest that's what it was, but I do think, obviously, an invest as an investigator, that's what you would look into. No question. Yeah. No question. Besides, he was the coolest uncle ever. You know what? He I is. Could, yeah. You know, <laughs> I could, I could believe that. Absolutely, absolutely. I, um, yeah. You know, people that have been through, um, very traumatic, emotional things growing up, I tend to turn out to be loving and caring and understanding. And they tend to be the cool uncle or the cool aunt, and absolutely absolutely so let's see here okay i'll tell you what um well yeah exactly glam dolly 30. not hard to imagine how inclusive the murdochs uh were paul and buster could never come out if they were gay yeah i agree they there's no way that family go of course you know absolutely so i'm still surprised that alex's mother is still alive i thought along with his father she was on her deathbed i I I just read an article in january that said she was on her deathbed but evidently she hasn't passed yet okay well hopefully she didn't follow any of this and, and wasn't able to follow any of this baloney. Okay. Now, if that didn't get you upset enough, just wait until my next story. Yikes, people. But before we go there, I would like to remind you that this channel is uh, survives on your donations. If you could make a donation, I would uh, greatly appreciate it. It is, again, a struggle to keep up and running. And the only way I can do it is if you help out. Uh, you can do a super chat and i appreciate those super chats more than you can know if you could however do a paypal venmo or cash app that would be greatly appreciated there are bills associated um with uh with web sleuths that need to be paid every week and it's just not going good at all and so we're just we're really struggling here so I'm just going to put this up right here. If you could, I'd greatly, greatly appreciate it. Uh, And thank you. Thank you very, very much. Okay. Now, if that didn't get you depressed enough, let me get you more depressed. Yes, that'll make you donate. Let me make you even more depressed, people. I saw this headline that Insightful One sent me. And I'm like, no, 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 this can't be. I can't take this. I can't accept this. I won't accept it. I'm going to fake it and say it's not true. But it is true. And let me get it for you. And of course, it comes from Florida, Florida or Texas. And this is from News Channel 8. Eight-year-old arrested, accused of cutting the throat of another child. Eight. Eight. Did I say eight? Now, he was, let me put this link up in chat, and I believe it's already in the description, my darling true crime angels. Hang on here. Just a second. Oh, I want to put this up here that uh, what Mel Mac just put up real quick here. Per Fitz News, mother of accused killer Alex Murdoch is reportedly on her deathbed at Alameda, South Carolina, home where her husband passed away a year and a half ago. That is sad. And again, I hope she was not able to watch that trial because that would have been heartbreaking. Absolutely heartbreaking. 
Okay, so I put the link up in chat. And again, I will put this in the description. And here we go. Can't believe this. An eight-year-old boy was arrested after he allegedly attacked another child at a Lake County home on Saturday. According to WESH, the eight-year-old choked the victim, the foster child at the residence. He later let the victim go when he said he couldn't breathe. Well, that was nice of him. I can't breathe. Let him go. Shows that kids can play together. But reports stated that the boy allegedly then grabbed a knife and swung it at the victim, cutting the child's throat when the victim approached him. WESH said the knife was taken away from the boy by the victim's friend. While the eight-year-old was looking for the weapon, he allegedly threatened to kill everyone. The child has issues. Jeez. The eight-year-old then went to grab a stick to try and hit the victim. However, other children standing nearby reportedly stopped the child from attacking. Good for them. I know. According yeah. to the Lake County Sheriff's Office, the eight-year-old boy was arrested and taken to the Lake County Detention Center. Officials said the victim didn't appear to be seriously hurt and was able to communicate with responding personnel. They reported that the eight-year-old is facing several charges. He's eight. Here's what he's facing. Now, I don't get this. I don't see how they can charge him with this stuff. There's no way. But supposedly, he is facing several charges, including aggravated battery with a deadly weapon, battery by strangulation, battery on a law enforcement officer, and resisting a law enforcement officer. You're eight. You have obviously incredible emotional, terrible issues. You don't have the ability to form intent. They can't arrest him and charge him. They can't. I, I mean, that's just me blathering on here, bloviating, as they say. So there you go. Oh, thank you. Hold on one second here. Thank you. Thank you, the Thoris. Thank you. Thank you. Says, hold on, I'm going to see if I can find this and put it up. Just a second here. Mm -hmm. There we go. The Thoris says, does Insightful give her froggies Croca-Cola? <laughs> <That's> clever. <laughs> Croca-Cola, but a bing, rim shot, people. That's you. Thank you for the donation and the laugh. We needed the laugh. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. All right. Ashley Higgins has one, too. Where you go? Oh, she does? That's funny. Wait. Ah, insightful ones, little buddies are totally awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I bet we could go on all night. I bet we could. <laughs> so, um, Carol Z is talking about the property where the Idaho murders took place. That property was donated to the college and they're going to tear it down. And that's a very good idea because it would become a shrine. And you know who would go there? All the crazy nut cases that run these YouTube channels, they go and broadcast there and they'd hold seances and do God knows what. So I'm very grateful that they're going to tear it down. Very grateful. Yeah. And it would be scary to live there because, you know, there are copycats and weirdos and you oh, just yeah. never know. You never know. You would not want that. Absolutely. Would not want that. Good night, Red Like Wine again. I'm so glad you came tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Also, real quick. Um, there is a story that came out of Washington State about a podcaster who was murdered. Uh, her and her husband were murdered. And a lot of people have approached me and said, you know, Trisha, be careful, be careful. I've literally been dealing with people that have wanted to kill me <laughs> because I didn't play what they wanted when I was uh, on the radio in Salt Lake City. And here's the thing. Whenever you go into anything, even if like this podcaster didn't have like a huge audience, if you have an audience of one or two, one of those people can be a deranged person that can become fixated with you. Yep. And if you if you do become involved in this and what's tragic is they took all the precautions. They got the restraining orders. They got the security cameras. They did everything. And he was still able to go in and shoot them. And he is dead as well. Jeez. It's sad. And I don't have an answer because this couple did everything they were supposed to and the police did everything they were supposed to he was just able to get in and kill them and it's as tragic as as tragic can be but i have scrappy joe and i have Othram text bug nugget the first they will protect me actually they won't care but that's okay i still love them i still love them 
Oh, Glam Dolly 30. It was like play Misty for me. This person just became obsessed with her. Absolutely obsessed. I had um, a couple of really weird things happen when I was in radio. One of them, there was a time when I first started working at a place called Z93 and all the old people in Salt Lake will remember it was the big rock station. I did the middays there forever. And um, that was when prisoners at the Utah State Prison. Hey, hey, hey. Speaking of people coming. Hold on. Just a second. That's his, there's a human there. I guess everywhere has a Z93 because we had a Z93 here too in California. <laughs> it was, or we still do. <laughs> Guys, it was just blue. It was just blue on the window seal. Uh. Anyway, um, at this time, they could uh, inmates could call. They could call out if they had money, and uh, this guy would call me. And he'd always start out, how's my favorite, Trisha? And I'd be like, oh, I'm fine. How are you? And, you know, and that was the, like, that was the only medium where you could actually call and talk to the person that you were listening to or watching or whatever. You know, you could call and talk to him. And mm -hmm. he called me every day. And I never knew if it was him on the phone. I'd pick up and I'd talk to him. I finally asked him, what are you in for? Because I didn't, I wasn't, he was trying to get something going with me, you know. And I wasn't having any of it. And he said he was in for marijuana. I, this is the second time somebody told me they were in for marijuana. And it was true. But there was something more horrible. Yeah. <laughs> so then he sends me these little booties made out of gum wrappers. It was pretty amazing, actually. It was really amazing how it was intricate and beautiful. Well, I was able to have a friend who was law enforcement check out what he uh, had, what he was in for. And I believe he was in for having sex with a minor and not a teenager. Oh, geez. So I called the prison and I said, look, I don't know what this guy's doing. I said, but he keeps calling me every day. He's not bugging me. I'm just letting you know. And he's sending me gifts. And, and it's kind of creeping me out. And then I never heard from him again. So I'm assuming they took care of it. Yeah. But, um, you know, I, I, I don't know. It just, uh, anybody that is in prison for doing that with a minor is just, you know, I, I don't want anything to do with it. I just, I just don't. So, but it was pretty creepy. It was really creepy. Hey, thank you. Thank you so much, Carla, for the cash app. What a sweetheart. Thank you. Hold on. Let me, can you read a few of these uh, wonderful comments while I take a look at my PayPal? I hate morning says, I swear my cat has a crush on Boo. She left my lap to jump up in front of the TV when Trisha says Boo. <laughs> <laughs> well, Boo is mighty handsome, I have to admit. Mighty, mighty handsome. Oh, thank you so much. Um, electric, that's all I'm going to say. Thank you, thank you. That's very sweet. We got uh, a, a donation from Electric. Thank you for PayPal. Let me just check Venmo. Oh, thank you, Margaret E. Thank you very, very much. And they, oh, and these, yeah, these are from the other day. So Margaret E., thank you. And again, uh, Danielle W. and Karen F., thank you for your donations from the other day. I really do appreciate it. So thank you. We got a donation from PayPal, a donation in Cash App, and a donation in Venmo, and um, several Cash Apps. I appreciate it. Thank you very, very, very much. Again, that is how we uh, survive here. It's the only way we can survive. And uh, it's just... Uh, it's pretty scary right now. So thank you, everybody. Now, real quick, tomorrow night, I'm going to have a woman on named Donna Kaufman. 
Donna Kaufman has written many books with Dr. Cyril Weck, very famous pathologist. Uh, she was also uh, a comedy writer for a lot of TV shows. She was uh, one of the comedy writers for Saturday Night Live. Um, she's written for so many people and she has many great famous people stories. Well, when Robert Blake died the other night, she put up a great story on her Facebook page about him. And of course he was found not guilty of killing his wife. And it was a great true crime uh, Hollywood story. So I called her, I said, look, why don't you come on tomorrow night and let's just talk about these Hollywood stories that may or may not have true crime in them. I said, you've got great stories and I, we need something a little different and a little entertaining. And you will find these stories that she has fascinating. So she is coming on uh, tomorrow night. Now, Insightful One, who's coming on Friday? Uh, Debbie Heater, the mother of Courtney Heater. Yeah, well, explain, please. Oh, yes. Um, Court Courtney Heater. Oh, jeez. She, um, she passed away. Her boyfriend, it was called 911, said his girlfriend like, fell off the bed and she passed away so really strange like the 911 operator like calls his parents his parents show up at the house and then courtney has uh, said she died of a drug overdose but she has blunt force trauma to her chest and other parts of her body mm -hmm. it's just a very complicated situation and the mother just wants you know a proper investigation now, but she did have the drugs in her system, right? Yep. Yeah. Okay. And that's, that's one thing that we need to really talk about when we have the mom on it. Yes, she did have blunt force trauma, but she also had the drugs in her system that could have killed her. And, and you and I have talked about this and, and I'll be honest, that's where my, I don't know, uh, comes from, you know, this, this isn't to me as clear cut a case, but I want to give this mother a chance to come on and tell her story. Why doesn't she think there was a proper investigation? Exactly, exactly. That's what I think too. And, you know, at least if what this woman wants is, you know, another investigation due to some of the corruption they have discovered. For example, some of the police involved have been arrested. Oh, really? Okay, yeah, yes. right there. That's, that's enough right there. Yeah, and then, you know, I see her wanting a proper investigation and I don't see anything wrong with that. So I hope she gets one. Yeah, I do too. You know? I, she deserves one, especially since some of the investigators themselves have been arrested. Absolutely. Yeah. And, um, uh, and also one other thing, correct me if I'm wrong, but the, the person who she thinks did this, his father said that he never saw her daughter used drugs, right? Correct. So a lot of people. Yeah, I have message from him to her where he says he was with her. He he loved her. She didn't use drugs. He never saw her use drugs or anything. Right. Yeah. Right. So, and another question is she did have some in awful injuries on her. Would she have been even capable of taking any drug, of getting up and taking drugs that night with those types of injuries, you know? Oh, so, yeah, the pictures are horrific of her right. injuries. So, again, she just wants a proper investigation. This is a mm -hmm. little different because, like I said, the, the drugs are in her system. This isn't something that's really cut and dry, but it is something that deserves a look into, and she deserves to have another investigation into her daughter's death. That's all she wants. So we want to give her a platform to talk to you all and, and get her story out there. And then on Saturday, we have pre-recorded an interview about a serial killer named, hold on one second. Oh, sorry. Just thought I saw something awful. I thought I saw a bug, but it wasn't. Named Albert Fish. Y'all remember him? I hope you don't because you'd have to be 110 to remember him. But you've probably <laughs> read about him. You've probably read about him. Horrific serial killer. And there's... We'll, we'll even show you some pictures. He has needles all in his stomach and his abdomen that he sh just shoved inside himself. I guess he swallowed some. 
he was he was just the most awful human being and the things he did to his victims so we have an expert that's going to try and explain albert fish and her name is dr uh katherine lamson rams sorry ramsland my teeth Kath, Dr. Catherine Ramsland. Right. And I know you're thinking, I've heard that name, Tricia. What's going on? She has been named in connection as uh, maybe somebody that taught Brian Kohlberger. Now, we didn't ask her about that. She made it very clear in the media she was not going to talk about it. We didn't even ask her if we could ask her. We So that question is not going to come up, just so you know. But you will be very impressed with her. She is brilliant. She is to the point, And she knows her stuff. And we're going to play that interview at a special time on Saturday at 5 p.m. Eastern. Because we want to give it its own show. Okay, its own time. It The link is already up there. If you go to uh, Web Sleuths on YouTube, you'll see it. It's there. It's scheduled to start at 5 p.m. Eastern on Saturday. And we'll send the link out through Twitter and, and everywhere. But I hope you'll join us for that. And then Saturday night, we will do Woo Woo. And the Thoris is going to come on and tell us what the medium said about the picture that she bought that uh, she said brought spirits to her house and absolutely freaked her out to no end. I think we've covered it all, haven't we, Insightful One? Yes, we have. And people in chat are correct. They're calling her the BTK woman. Yeah, okay, then that's it. That's, there you go. There you go. She um, worked very closely with BTK to write a book. And she does talk about that. Uh, she talks about that. That actually um, quite, uh, it's very interesting what she says about that. She is the BTK woman. And she has the ultimate, ultimate book on the case. And we'll put those links and everything up uh, in the description when we play the interview. That's uh, Saturday at 5 p.m. Eastern. And we'll be here. Uh, to talk about it after. And just like we did the other, like last night that we did with Dr. Daly and the incel uh, discussion. So we will have that. And I think that's everything, isn't it? Insightful one. Yeah. Yeah. She's uh, it's, it's going to be great. And yeah, um, the BTK's daughter has talked about her before and we're working on trying to get in touch with her as well. So keep your fingers crossed on that one. So anyway, I think that's it. I think that's everything. I'm just looking what everybody's saying. And again, everybody, thank you for your donations. They are greatly, greatly needed. Um, I, anything you can do, always appreciated. Uh, Moonlight View, thank you for being here, my darling. I know Ping isn't here, but he knows we love him. Also, uh, Love and Coco, I didn't see you in chat, but uh, I know you got lots going on. We love you. And we'll be back tomorrow night. Donna Kaufman, she and Dr. Wett wrote a great book about the Kennedy assassination. They've written many books. You're going to find her so entertaining. She's going to tell us all these behind the scenes Hollywood stories, and some of them are connected to true crime, some not. It's just going to be a good night where we're not going to talk about eight-year-olds trying to slash the throat of six-year-olds. We're going to right. lighten it up yeah. just a little bit for once. Okay, everybody, love you all. Thank you for everything. And we'll see you tomorrow night at 1030 Eastern for Web Sleuths YouTube Live. Bye-bye. Good night.